crossroads of the Ozarks. Greetings and welcome to the Gilbert House Fellowship Bible Study for Sunday, December 18th, 2022. I'm Derek Gilbert. I am Sharon Gilbert. Welcome to our humble um, abode (laughs) (laughs) here on the, uh, well, the crossroads of Missouri. The yeah. crossroads of America. Yeah, we can that say that honestly because it is literally designated as, as such by the U.S. Geological roads. Survey. That's exactly. official. That's it's, really it official. Is official. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Official. So welcome in, and the cattle are back on the ridge, and everything is fine. Birds are eating their seeds. <laughs> crows are outside. Life is good. They're all preparing. We got a major winter blast coming this week, just in time for just in time for Christmas. We're supposed to get some rain and snow tomorrow, but uh, come Thursday. It's going to get down to minus one, and many of you are in the same boat. Many of you may be much colder oh, yeah, and, yeah. and enduring snow and ice. So, you know, this is part of winter. As as my mother says, at least it's not, we're not in North Dakota, which is where <laughs> she's from. And uh, they, they and, yeah. And, it's, and, and, okay, to be fair, many of our listeners are in North Dakota and Canada, and, and, and they're also dealing with this. Sure, so that, that's your point, is that it's much worse, it's much harsher in the wintertime. And that's my, north. Yeah. but that's my point. Ah, We're yes. not telling an anecdote about our mothers. Right. Yes. People are sitting there in the four feet snow going, I don't want to hear about your mother. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just want a shovel or a snowblower. That's right. Right. Mama survived that. And so she's happy to be here in the Ozarks. Where, I uh, survived it. When I was a kid, there were lots of times where we had three or four feet of snow. Yeah. And I lived in Southern Indiana, for goodness sake. Yeah. But you know, it's, uh, it's all because of global warming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this 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 ice blast, global warming. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's funny looking at the uh, the fact checkers as they try to you know convince us that we're not seeing what we're seeing with our eyes. The, <laughs> our lion eyes. Yeah, uh, Rutgers University has been tracking since 1967 the snow cover in the northern hemisphere. And you can look at a map. They get uh, information from NASA satellites, and uh, they they will show you a map of the snow cover in the northern hemisphere. And uh, during the month of November. The uh, snow cover was at its greatest extent ever since they began recording this back in 1967. Well, we're just old enough to remember Al Gore promising we would never see snow again by now. So, uh, yes. But but let me also say this. Recording since 1967. That's what you have to underline. Correct. Because historically going back, there was the little ice age in Europe that Mm -hmm. lasted from about the 16th century through the end of the 19th. Mm Mm-hmm. Little so, ice age. Right. So things change. Climate change is a real thing. It's just that it's driven by the great big flaming ball of gas in the sky. Exactly. So, and we're still, to, scientists are still trying to figure out exactly what the uh, cycles of the sun really are. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, again, going back to the 1940s, 50s, whenever the solar ob- observations started really taking place. There was this idea that there were 11-year cycles. Now they're saying that it's 22-year cycles. Mm -hmm. And then there are others saying, no, it's 120-year cycles. Yeah. So I don't think we know. No, that's true. Bottom line is prepare. Prepare for everything. Mm -hmm. But most of all, prepare spiritually because a day is coming where we will all be um, before the uh, creator of the universe. That is really it. I mean, prepare, yes, for those day-to-day issues that we Mm -hmm. have to live with on this earth, but the day is coming when if you are not prepared by being covered by the blood of Christ, then you are going to be very disappointed. Right, right. So that is the uh, that is the message, yes. And uh, by being prepared, you may have an opportunity then to share with somebody who did not, and mm-hmm. uh, this show By the being love prepared of Christ, here on earth. <laughs> being prepared here on earth, and uh, then help them to prepare for exactly. eternity. Exactly. So. Well, you know, back in Nebraska, the, my ex-husband, those of you who've listened to us for a long time know that Derek and I were both married previously, mm-hmm. and my ex-husband, we lived in Nebraska, and uh, farmed, and you lived out in the middle of nowhere, and right. if you did not have a month or two worth of provisions, you were very sorry. Mm-hmm. Because you couldn't get out to the store when there literally were four feet of snow exactly. in your drive and on the road, and nobody's going to come and plow it. Yeah. A mom was telling me a story last night about uh, a bad snowstorm when she was a little girl, third grade. For for her, those memories are, are very, very clear. More so as she ages. Yeah. That's, yeah. That, that's what happens as we get older. Those old memories become clearer. But just walking the quarter mile driveway from the uh, state highway that ran past the farm, to the farmhouse, lost her boots, then lost her shoes, mm. and then got stuck. And uh, her two older brothers had gone into the house and 
grandma had to send, send them back out. Where's Shirley? Uh-huh. Yeah, go get her. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that's the kind of thing when you're on a farm, you learn you have to be self-reliant because mm. there's no nobody close by. No, no. no police officer, fireman or you know whatever who is going to save your bacon if you make a mistake. So, And I think that uh, that's something we've lost this idea of yeah. I can run down to the store really quickly or Amazon can bring it to me. Right. Yeah. I, I used to joke with my, some of my Amish customers, but only half joking back in <laughs> Illinois. When things really hit the fan, we're coming to live with you until we learn how to, you know, do the stuff that Again, you guys do every day. only half joking. Yeah, yeah. So, well, we're back into the uh, the, the Chronicles today. And uh, oh, just Lots a quick reminder, names. quick reminder, uh, please download our free app, which is... Uh, we, we were talking yesterday as we've uh, brought back our, our first podcast, PID Radio, Peering into Darkness, if you wonder what that stands for, which we started back in 2005. And, um, you, of course, you can use a podcatcher, iTunes or whatever, to uh, get that Apple podcast, Google podcast, Amazon Music, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. We're on all of those. But if you get our app, you're bypassing gatekeepers. Mm-hmm. And bringing it right from the Christian company who hosts our content to your device. So yeah. gilberthouse.org slash app and that's uh, available for all of the mobile platforms also uh Roku and Apple TV yeah you want it's to take pretty good TV so oh yeah um so do take advantage of that and there's a bland new brand new bland <laughs> not a bland it's brand <laughs> new uh tab on there for their blog and then a lot of times Derek will post excerpts from his books and starting next year I'm going to be posting excerpts from mm-hmm. the Red Wing saga so you want to make sure that you uh you you get the app because that's where you're going to find those things very quickly. And if you click notifications, then you'll get, uh, you know, an update as soon as something new comes along. Mm-hmm. So that uh, that bit of business out of the way, let's dive into uh, a word of prayer That's and then good. start reading these lists of names today. Father, thank you for your word, which has preserved these for us, your word, your law, but also your sacrifice, which means we are no longer under the law. That according to Paul, the gospel by which we are saved is very simple, just accepting the historical fact that in accordance with your word, you died for our sins. And then in accordance with your word, you rose again on the third day, buying us back, redeeming us from the forces of darkness that would take us with them when they go to destruction. So, Father, help us as we study your word to pay attention, to try to see the world through the eyes of the prophets, your prophets and your apostles. Help us to understand. Grant us wisdom, Father, we pray as we study your word this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. You know, getting back to what we were discussing a minute ago, snow, you grew up in Chicago. The lake effect snow up there had to have been really deep. It was... See, we, we lived on the northwest side of Chicago, so most of the prevailing winds were coming from the northwest towards Lake Michigan. It was a lot worse if you lived in uh, the region. Yeah, but uh, you were up close Gary. to Wisconsin. I mean, you got some snow. We did, yeah. I remember in Chicago, 1967, that was really bad. Um, we were out of the city back in 78, I think it was. We we had just moved out there, and mm-hmm. I, I remember that was really bad. Oh, so um, it's January of 78. That was a massive blizzard that hit right. the entire Midwest. That was um, that was the year after we moved up there. We hadn't even been up there in that uh, suburban oh, region. Is- oh, ah! <laughs> hadn't uh, been up there even a year when that uh, when that storm hit. And uh, yeah, that was that was pretty intense. That was the winter that cost um, Michael Balandic the mayor of Chicago, his job. He was the successor for uh, the old Mayor Daley. And that's how Jane Byrne got elected. Belanda couldn't get the streets plowed in 78. So uh, Jane Byrne became the first female mayor in uh, Chicago's history. You know, it's interesting to say he couldn't get the streets plowed. I wonder how much politics played in that. Oh, a lot. That that they just said, we're not going to plow him because, yeah. Yeah. Belanda was Daley's chosen successor, but he was no Richard J. Or Richard wow. M., for that matter. Uh, either of the mayors daily. He yeah. was not, uh, he was not uh, their equal. The daily mayors. So, yeah, yeah there was a lot. There was a lot that, uh, yeah. Got got some stories. Mom was a Republican election judge in Chicago. For oh, my gosh. I could just cycles. hear her talking about it, too. Yeah. I love you, Mom. Anyway. Okay, now to First, First Chronicles, Chronicles, Chapter 3. Lots of names today. And as, as usual, uh, I will be reading along, trying to keep up in these, uh, the Brenton Septuagint, mm-hmm. which, again, at BibleHub.com, you have... 
just a whole bunch of translations you can choose. And uh, this is one of them. It's free. And if you go to our website on the desktop version, gilberthouse.org, you can also get it on the uh, the mobile version, but it's easier to find if you're looking at the three column layout of the desktop. Right. On the right hand column, online Bible study tools, and we've got that there: Blue Letter Bible, Faith Life Study Bible, Bible Gateway Bible it's Study, etc. Yep. Um, there's no first, there's no excuse. I mean, you don't have to go out and spend a thousand dollars on Bible software right, to right. have all this at your fingertips. The tools are there. These are the sons of David who were born to him in Hebron. The firstborn, Amnon, by Achanoam, the Jezreelite. The second, Daniel, by Abigail the Carmelite. I didn't realize. I'd forgotten that David had a son named Daniel. Yeah, exactly. And by the way, in the Septuagint, it always says the old-fashioned Jezreelites ah, and Carmelites. Okay. Mm-hmm. The ESS is an old way, and even back in the late 19th, early 20th centuries, you would still hear manageress. Mm-hmm. Things like that. Yeah, waitress, actress. Yeah, yeah we're kind of losing today. those. Yeah. I like those. The third, Absalom, or Absalom, whose mother was Ma'aka, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. Talmai is a uh, is a Hurrian name, by the way. Yeah, and and remember when later on we study Absalom once again mm-hmm. that he is actually the grandson of the king of Geshur. So yes, you know when you marry someone from another country, mm-hmm. another kingdom, you can run into trouble. And Geshur was a kingdom on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bethsaida was the capital city. And they recently found a gate there. Uh, in fact, that was one of the... A uh, Um Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, we, we saw a presentation on that at the uh, International Symposium on Archaeology and the Bible two we years did. ago. We did. Are we... That's not embargoed anymore, is it? No, no. <laughs> okay. That was the one with the... Um, the stela at the gate with the that's bull. That's right. Oh, yes. Whoa, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's definitely a babel, which means a god gate. Yeah. You have to pay homage to the god before you get to go into the city. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the same idea. You and I on Piatti Radio, I think we talked about, um, or did we? No, it was on Sci Friday. We talked about Janus, who is a yeah. primordial god who had to be appeased and, and you know, uh, uh, invoked before you could talk to any other god Mm -hmm. because he was the god of the essentially opening the door to all the other gods yeah he was the portal the porter considered by some uh, among the romans to be the uh, most important of the gods because you got to get him to open no beginning and no ending is how he was described why he was depicted with two faces Mm -hmm. which you know i'd forgotten to mention this yesterday but um the vizier of the sumerian god enki Lord of the Earth, whose mm-hmm. uh, domain was the Abzu, the Abyss. His vizier, whose name I forget, was also depicted as a two-headed deity, hmm. or two-faced rather, one on either side of his head. So there are some who believe that Janus is a just a Roman continuation of that old entity, the vizier who counseled the god in the Abyss. Hmm. That would be interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, well, Side Friday, very last one, will be airing on the 30th. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the very, probably the last one. We'll, we'll, we we'll might say do some Sci Friday specials in the future. We but, might. Um, we just want to do PID Radio because we can do a whole lot more on that one, and it's uh, right. audio only, so less Much bandwidth and faster to turn around as well. It so, is. So anyway, um, yeah, and we will be visiting the uh, that region uh, if we get an opportunity. By the way, as we go out earlier, uh, we're rabbit trailing now. Uh, Imagine us doing that <laughs> when we go out to uh, uh, Israel in March. If we can visit the site of Beth Saida. That would be awesome if we could... Uh, now, now you're listening to this and thinking, oh, great, I'd like to go there. Derek and I are actually going a few days early mm-hmm. so we can go to some sites that really are just really hard to get to. Yeah. And so we will go just with a guide and maybe one other person in a Jeep or something, and, mm-hmm. and we'll be filming at those sites. Right. And if we find that it is accessible for a future tour, then we'll try to add that. But mm-hmm. yeah, we're essentially scouting. Yeah, yeah. That, so anyway, that yeah, that would be really great if we could do that because mm. uh, that whole region is very, very important. Um, so verse three. Verse three. The uh, Well, let me go back again to verse two. The third, Absalom, whose mother was Ma'aka, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. The fourth, Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith. The fifth, Shephatiah by Abital or Avital. Avital. I know. Yeah. Yishai Avital. Yeah, one of our, one of our excellent our guides, guides exactly. from uh, Lipkin Tours. The sixth, Ithraim by his wife Eglah. Six were born to him in Hebron, when he, where he reigned for seven years and six months. And he reigned 33 years in Jerusalem. 
for a total of yeah. 40 altogether. Mm-hmm. Nice the, number. These were born to him in Jerusalem. Shimea, Shovab, or Shovav, Nathan and Solomon, four by Bathsheba, the daughter of Amiel. Then Ivhar, now wait a minute, Solomon, Bathsheba, that's Bathsheba. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah, Bathsheba, okay. Yes. Uh, then Ivhar, Elishama. It's in the Septuagint. But. Right. And, and that name, Bathsheba, uh, is, uh, again, that is a Hurrian name mm-hmm. because it's a reference to Hebat, who was the chief female deity in the Hurrian pantheon. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Hurrians were a people from northern Mesopotamia, probably, well, not probably, but archaeolog- archaeologists have found that they originate in the plain of Ararat. Yes. Which is really, really interesting. If you follow Noah, where he landed, then, Mm -hmm. you know, civilization would have spread out from there. Right. So Bathsheba or Bathshua, the daughter of Amiel. Then Ivhar, Elishama, Eliphalet, Noga, Nepheg, Yafia, Elishama, Eliada, and Eliphalet, nine. So two named Eliphalet, apparently. Mm -hmm. Eliphalet, whatever. All these were David's sons, beside the sons of the concubines... And Tamar was their sister. So you get one woman named because she plays a key role in a story. I think that's it. There probably were other sisters. Statistically speaking, he probably would have had more daughters. Mm -hmm. We're just not getting their names. Yeah, we will uh, see those events coming up in 2 Samuel 12. The son of Solomon was Rehoboam, Avijah his son, Asa his son, Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat his son. These are the kings who followed David. Joram, his son, Ahaziah, his son, Joash, his son, Amaziah, his son, Azariah, his son. Yes, Sorry, can you read verse 11 again? Verse 11 again. Um, Joram, or Yoram, his son, Ahaziah, oh, his okay. son. Yeah, I was trying to figure out which of these names fit the one you were saying, and, and I think that may be the one. This Joach. is Ocas, O-C-H-O. Oh, okay. Mm. Trying to transliterate into Greek and then back into English. Yeah, exactly. Joash, his son, Amaziah, his son, Azariah, his son, Jotham, his son, Ahaz, his son, Hezekiah, his son, Manasseh, his son, Amon, his son, Josiah, or Hosiah, his son, the sons of Josiah, Yohanan, the firstborn, the second, Jehoiakim, the third, Zedekiah, the fourth, Shalom. Those are essentially, that's the end of the line of, of David there. Uh-huh. Babylonians uh, put a stop to that. The, hen, the descendants of Jehoiakim, Yekoniah, his son, Zedekiah, his son, and the sons of Yekoniah, the captive. Well, excuse me. No, somewhere along the line, the line of David did no, continue. Okay, the, the line of David. It didn't Divi- stop entirely. Correct. But they were, they were no longer sitting on the throne of Judah. Right. Yeah. Right. Because there was <laughs> Otherwise, no Otherwise, Jesus can't claim to have been. Correct. Yeah, I, I misspoke. I didn't, uh, didn't, didn't speak clearly. Speak your right words. Yes. Uh, the sons of Yekoniah, the captive. He was the one who was carried off by Nebuchadnezzar. Shealtiel, his son, Malchirim, Pediah, Shenazar, Yekamiah, Hoshama, and Nedeviah, and the sons of Pediah, Zerubbabel and Shimei, Zerubbabel, who Interesting brought the back captives in, back. Yes. Interesting, back in verse 18, the last name is Nava, N-A-B-A, mm-hmm. Dias, Nava Dias. Hmm. Okay. Which I don't know. Remember, these were born in captivity, so right. some of these may be named According to local traditions, I, I would say that Shenazar, for for one, and uh, Nabadias, if that's here, N A B A, as in Nabu. Uh, okay, yeah. Doesn't mean that that's how he was named, but that's what the Septuagint says. Yeah, it says Nabadias, which is very. There was a god worshipped in uh, Babylon called Nabu. Nabu yeah. Um, Who's also called Ratiel <laughs> in the Red Wing Saga. <laughs> uh, and the sons of Pediah, Zerubbabel and Shimei. And the sons of Zerubbabel, Meshulam and Hananiah. And Shelemith was their sister. And Hashuva, Ohel, Berechiah, Hesediah, and Yushav Hesed, five. The sons of Hananiah, Pelatiah and Yeshaya, his son Rephiah, and his son Arnon, his son Obadiah, his son Shechaniah, 
the son of Shechaniah, Shemaiah, and the sons of Shemaiah, Hatush, Egal. Ah, I know a guy named Egal. Yeah, we, yes, Dr. we Egal did. Dr. Egal German, mm-hmm. yeah. Beriah, Neariah, and Shaphat, six. The sons of Neariah, Eli-Oanai. Boy, they got all the vowels in that one. They do. <clears throat> Eli- yeah, that's probably as close as I'm going to get. El- 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 Eleonai, Hizkiah, and Azrakam, three. Well, is, is of, that verse 24? That was uh, 23. Oh, sorry. Uh, but his name comes up again in 24. The sons of Eleonai. This just says Elethinon. Okay. <laughs> that's easy, actually easier <laughs> yeah, to say. Yeah, it is. Hodaviah, Eliashiv, Peliah, Akub, Yohanan, Deliah, and Anani, seven. Here's your certificate for having survived <laughs> Seven, the 70 per, Getting 70% or more <laughs> of those names correct. Oh, goodness. We have no idea. We're terrible. But we try. We really do try. And each year we go and we spend mm-hmm. some time with our wonderful Jewish friends over in Israel. We learn a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Okay, verse uh, 1 of chapter 4. The sons of Judah, Perez, Hetzron, Carni, Sorry, Carmi, Hur, and Shoval. There's a town in southern Illinois named uh, Carmi. I know. That's how they pronounce it there. I know. It's Carmi. And by yeah. the way, it was Judah, actually, if you want to say Judah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, most of us say Judah. Yeah. Reiah, the son of Shoval, fathered Jahath, and Jahath, or Yahat, uh, fathered Ahumai and Lahad. These were the clans of the, of the Zorathites. These were the sons of Etam, Jezreel, yeah, sorry, Yezreel, uh, Ishma, and Ibash, and the name of their sister was Hatzelel Pony. Hatzelel Pony. Hmm. Hmm. A little pony. And Penuel fathered Gedor, and Etzer fathered Husha. These were the sons of Hur, the firstborn of Ephrata, the father of Bethlehem. Ah. Bethlehem Etraf, Ephrata. Mm-hmm. We are in the Christmas season, mm-hmm. and that's where he's born. Yeah. Bethlehem, House of Bread. By the way, there's a wonderful book by uh, Zev Porat, and there's another one by Carl um, Gallops? Gallops that the two of them work together in a wonderful way. Uh, they get into the, and Zev especially, gets into the truth behind the manger. Mm-hmm. And, and, actually, and where he was actually born? Yeah, finds the location of it, identifies it. It's not quite the place you imagined. No, no. It's a really wonderful story. And the name of the book, do you remember? Sorry, I'm just not grabbing in my head. Um, my head's is, got an empty place there. What is Zeb's book called? Um, I'll, I'll have to look that up. You look that up while I finish reading names. Verse 5, Ashur, the father of Tekoa, had two wives, Hela and Nara. Nara bore him Ahotsam, Hefer, Temeni, and Hahash, Tari. These were the sons of Nara. The sons of Hela, Zeret, Ishar, and Etnan. Now, I want you to underline that part. <laughs> because now we go to Koz. Where did he come from? Koz fathered Anuv. Yeah, uh, Zovetha, sorry, sorry, Zoveba, Zoveba, Z-O-B-E-B-A-H, and the clans of Aharhel, Aharhel, boy, I tell you what, I'm not going to get a certificate at all, <laughs> the son of Harum. Now, I'm going to stop there, ask if you found anything, because... Um, unmasking the Chaldean spirit. Uh, ah, yeah. and you know, it is it is not about trying to find evil, you know, Chaldeans hiding in place, he really gets back to the true meaning of these verses. And I love Zev. He he has taught us so much mm-hmm. about what's in the Bible. If you look at the original language and you and he can speak it and he can read it and the old, old versions of Hebrew and he can tell you what the individual letters, when you add them up, you know, what each letter stands for. So right. there's a lot more in there than, than we Westerners, at least I'm including myself, mm-hmm. than more than I can read in there. The reason I stopped there, again, quotes where did he come from? That's verse eight. Mm-hmm. Because then we get to verse nine with stuff that it's like, where did they come from? Where did Yavez come from? Jabez, uh-huh. we uh-huh. call him. He's not named in here. Huh. Well, let's see. And we don't know the name of his mother unless his mother is Hela because it comes in that section. 
but she's not listed as having given birth to someone named Yavez or right. Jabez. I know a lot. I've read a lot about this this morning, and no one seems to know where he suddenly came from and who his mother is. Uh, let's see. Coase, so they're looking at the Anchor Yale Bible Dictionary. Listed among the descendants of Judah, nothing is otherwise known of him. The abrupt appearance of the name in the genealogy suggests to some commentators that it has dropped out as a result of haplography and should be appended to the end of 1 Chronicles 4, verse 7. But also, beginning in verse 9, we've got a couple of verses that, why are they in here? Because suddenly we've got the name Jabez or Yavez. Right. And a story about him very quickly. Let me read it. Verse 9. Yavez was more honorable than his brothers. Who are his brothers? Mm -hmm. They're Judahites, but who are they? And his mother was called him his name, Yavez, saying, because I bore him in pain. The word here actually means a curse. Well, yeah. And the word translated um, honorable, keved, denotes weightiness, both literal and as in the weight of a physical object, and metaphorical as honor, glory, or wealth. Most translations follow the latter sense. This is now from the uh, Faith Life Study mm-hmm. Bible. Indicate Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. However, understanding Kevet in the physical sense indicates that Jabez was just heavier than his brothers. He well, was a big baby, which makes sense of the next line, because I sense bore of the him pain, in pain. But yeah. also the name itself is because she bore him in pain. Or the word there also can mean a curse. This is why he asks the Lord for a blessing. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, for Genesis 3, the Lord said women now will bear, you know, their children in travail. That is part of her, quote unquote, curse. So, verse 9 again, Yavez was more honorable than his brothers, or bigger, and his mother called his name Yavez, saying, because I bore him in pain. He really caused me a whole lot of effort and pain, and man, oh, did that hurt. Right, and the translator's notes from the Net Bible, New English Translation, the the name Yabetz, or Jabez, as mm-hmm. we would say, sounds like the uh, the Hebrew noun Otsev, which means pain. Mm-hmm. It's a play on words. Yes, well, that's typical of Hebrew. Yeah. Verse 10, again, this is a story that just is like, why is this thrown in here? She named her son, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Yavetz called upon God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border. In other words, because his name's me- name means heaviness or curse, mm-hmm. he's asking for a blessing. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border and that your hand, your hand is sometimes referring to the hand of God, which means Yeshua. Mm -hmm. He is at the right hand. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border and that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from harm so that it might not bring me pain. Mm -hmm. Or bring me pain. Yes. It all depends on how you emphasize the syllables there. Um, This prayer was the topic of a of a Wilkerson book back in the year 2000. Right. Extremely popular book. Mm-hmm. And there were critics and and I'm not sure how I feel about it, but there I love Wilkerson, loved him. I mean, he's with the Lord now, but um there yeah, the, were critics the at the Jabez, time yeah. saying, "No, you're you're sort of this is a magical prayer." No, I don't think he ever said that. But the point is that no matter what your circumstances are, Don't blame your circumstances. Go to the Lord and ask him to change them. Mm -hmm. It's not saying, give me wealth. It's not saying, give me a whole bunch of property or some great houses or anything like that. He's saying, give me opportunity. Yeah. It's the the criticism of the prayer of Jabez. and The book. Of the book, Mm -hmm. yes. By David Wilkerson is that um, the suggestion that if you pray a certain specific set of words, that God is somehow obligated to do what you want rather than you doing what God wants that never or works. God doing what you need. No, no. And, and uh, I, it don't should not, that, I don't think that's what that's I, what I, I doubt that that's what David Wilkerson meant. He was just pointing out, so look, petition God. When you're in trouble, petition God, and, and he will give you what you need. That's but there are those who would interpret it a different way. And there's, there are other books like, uh, 
Well, I'm not going to call anybody out. But no, all, don't. But yeah, everybody's but, familiar with the Wilkerson book, so we can well, talk yeah, ex- about it. Exactly. And, and I think that he meant well with it. I really do. Right. But, you know, the word faith movement in general, where mm-hmm. if you, it's believed that if you pray a certain way that your words will manifest what you want in this in this realm. And, and you're not conflating Wilson with that. No, no, no. With that. No, 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 please don't. I, what, what I'm saying is that we're, uh, th- that is the way we're viewing this. If you interpret David Wilkerson's book or any teaching by a pastor, or if any pastor is actually teaching that if you pray a certain specific set of words that God will will be obligated to bless you in a certain way, uh, in other words, giving you what you want instead mm-hmm. of what you need, right. or God doing what he wants and you following his will, then that pastor is wrong or your interpretation or understanding right. of that prayer is wrong. When Jesus said, pray in this way, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Right. He wasn't giving us a formula. No. He well, was, he was giving us a he pattern. He was giving it us a pattern. Right. Yes. He wasn't giving us a magical working. It, yes. It was not a spell. Right. What's interesting is that we interviewed David Duncan years yeah, ago, so, who, a brother who's gone on to be with the mm-hmm. Lord, who came out of the new age movement. He uh, survived the summer of love and hate Ashbury, San Francisco back in 1967. And he said that there are those in the new age and and the occult who view Christianity as a very weak form of magic because Mm -hmm. most Christians in their eyes, they, they think Christians don't understand that we're actually casting spells when we pray, which is not at all what we're doing. It really isn't. But the word faith movement comes dangerously close to that by yeah. saying, if you pray these words, God will do this for you. Yeah, I, I think we probably I don't want to get into taking any segment of Christianity no, and no. saying that they're they're wrong or anything like that. Let's just say, where did this come from? Yeah. Why is this suddenly inserted, sewn into this chapter? It's also in the Septuagint. So That's why true. is it here? Right. That that's a really good question, and uh, I don't think Bible teachers really understand fully because there's no explicit explanation in the Bible. But um, it would seem that this Yavetz or Jabez, if mm-hmm. you prefer, was uh, blessed for praying to God. You know uh, uh, that. Uh, he, he, okay, I. I and for all we know, Jabez said, look, I was a difficult birth. My mother really endured a lot of pain. You know, please, you know, just protect me or may, may I may I not harm anyone else as I enlarge my borders. Nearly Maybe. every interpretation is speculative because we have so little information here. What we do know is that no matter what his circumstances were, he knew he could go directly to the Lord, which is amazing mm-hmm. that he prayed directly to the Lord. He didn't go to the priest. He didn't, you know, make all these sacrifices or anything. All we're told is that he asked the Lord. Now, he may have gone through those first. We're just not told. Mm -hmm. We get so little information Yeah, But what's interesting, and and again, this is the Faith Life Study Bible, which is available for free online, so you can read these notes. And we also enjoy and and really benefit from the net Bible notes, which is why I look back over there regularly. The the Chronicles, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, you, we, we see a repeated pattern of prayer and God answering prayer. Mm-hmm. We'll see it later when we get to King yes. Hezekiah. Yes. So um, this that's something to bear in mind. God answers prayer, and sometimes he answers with what we want, but always with what we need. Exactly. And w- I do love it when we get patterns, not specific spells, if you want to put it that way, not specific. This is if you pray these words never fail. You're always going to get what you want. That isn't how the word of God works. Yeah. Yeah. But when you get the, he went, no matter what his circumstances were, he was able to go directly to the Lord right. that we can take home. Yes. Uh, the Lord's prayer. It begins with hallowed be thy name. Our father. Mm-hmm. He's our daddy. Mm-hmm. Our, our, not Jesus didn't say my father. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He said our father right. who art in heaven. We know where he is. We mm-hmm. know where he reigns. Hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name. Mm -hmm. Start out that way. Start out talking to him as your father. Know that he is holy, but despite that, you can come to him with your daily, you know, just daddy, I'm hurting today. Mm -hmm. Daddy, it's been really hard. Yeah. You know, you are holy. You're in charge of the world. You hold me in your hand. And and please help me with this. Right. And it's, uh, you know, give us this day our daily 
bread. Right. Not give us this day our 401k so that mm. we are provided for until we die. Exactly. It's just one day at a time mm. is what he... So the, I think the, the bigger picture here is take this in context. Yes. But Don't, it's difficult in context here because like, what? Yeah, yeah. But in the context of the whole Bible, we see that God is not a genie in a lamp granting wishes every time we come to him with the right formula. That's how the fallen realm behave. Yes. Yes. Do this for me and I might do mm-hmm. this for you. That's not how God works. No. And so um taking this little otherwise cryptic section because it's not explained and again right. we don't know where Coz came from other than he was the father of well these other folks the the this. Well exactly. <laughs> But the other thing to remember about these lists is it's very, very important because you needed to say, I'm the son of, the son of, the son of. Yeah. And if you didn't have the lists, especially hundreds of years later, Mm -hmm. it was very difficult to prove who you were. Right, right. And that led to some political disruption Mm -hmm. when you get down to the um, second and first century BC. Mm -hmm. You get the returnees from Mesopotamia coming back and not able to prove their genealogy. So you had people who had been serving as priests in Mesopotamia came back and the, uh, the, the priesthood in Jerusalem saying, well, yeah, you're not on the list. And there are a lot of similarities between these first few chapters of Chronicles and the begats mm-hmm. in the New Testament. Right. Because it's the Lord Jesus Christ proving his descent. He really does have have the right to that throne. Yeah. The human part of him has the right to that throne. Mm -hmm. Let's face it. The godly part of him doesn't need the human part of him. He can take whatever he wants. But the fact is the Lord set the rules and he follows the rules. Right. He said, that belongs to a human and I'm going to follow that rule. Yeah. And the fallen realm tried to... um also bound by those rules. Tried to find a... Uh, find a way well, to... Well, I'm pretty sure there's a loophole in here somewhere. Mm-hmm. We'll create some hybrids and maybe yeah, one of those can take over as king work. of the world. No, yeah. no, that didn't work. So again, uh, verse 9, Yavetz was more honorable than his brothers or just bigger. And his mother called his name Yavetz, saying, because I bore him in pain, Yavetz called upon the God of Israel, saying, and again, if this, if they're in captivity... At this time. Oh, they're not, though, are they? No. No, okay. Called upon the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from harm, so that it might not bring me pain. And that last part sounds a little bit selfish, but, you know. And God granted what he asked. So, uh, clearly, the Lord felt that this is a worthy prayer. Mm -hmm. And I just want to, one more time before I begin with verse 11, say we love David Wilkerson's book. And uh, if you just read it as a way to understand this prayer a little bit better and not say, oh, that's magical. Right. Which is not what he meant. Exactly. If you look at all of Wilkerson's, you know, preaching and did I hear a little boom over there? Just making sure. Yeah, it was probably... uh it's probably someone texting yeah. <laughs> the meteorologist to Channel 3. Oh, I thought maybe it was Joey <laughs> Tushies. Uh, verse 11, Keluv... Or Caleb, probably. Mm-hmm. The brother of Shua, father Mahir, and father Eshton. Eshton, father Beth Rafa. Beth Rafa. Hmm. House of Rafa. Yeah. House what of are, the healer, probably, but. Yeah, hmm. probably. But Rafa is. Uh, yeah. Well, Also yeah. refers to the Raphaim. Uh huh. Singular form. Yeah. Yep. Father Beth Rafa. House of the giant? Well. Or like I say, it could be healer. That's mm-hmm. an alternate translation. Sure. Pashaya and Tehina, the father of Irnash, Irnahash. These are the men of Reka, the sons of Kenaz, Otniel and Sheraiah, and the sons of Otniel, Hathat and Meonatai. Meonatai fathered Ofra. Ofra. Hmm. Father of Irnahash, Nahash. Well, it says, um, yes, Ir Nakash. The city of the Nakash. Yes, exactly. Nakash is the uh, word generally translated serpent. But, but what's uh, interesting about the word Ir is that it, city. Yeah, it also means, it in, in Aramaic, Aramaic, it means watcher. Yeah. But, um, hmm. It's an interesting name to give your child. 
Yeah. So that, that verse 12 again, as uh, Eshton fathered Beth Rapha, was that... Uh, there are two names in this verse that are really... Pesia and Tehina, the father like, of Ir Nahash. Mm, it uh, sounds like you're talking about... Um, because in the Septuagint, it does say father of the city of Nahash. Oh, that now that makes more sense. Right. And Beth Rapha would sound like a place name, yes. not the name of a, a exactly. child. Because Beth house means of. house of or temple of. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. And this says, these are the men of Reka. The sons of Canaz, verse 13. Otniel and Sariah and the sons of Otniel, Hatat and Meonatai. Meonatai fathered Ofra. Ofra is uh, spelled a little differently, but it is where our good friend lives. And mm-hmm. Sariah fathered Yoav, the father of Geharashim, so called because they were craftsmen. Yeah. Geharashim means valley of craftsmen. Mm. Well. That's why Ge. Hinnom, Valley of mm-hmm. Hinnom. Yeah. yeah. The sons of Caleb, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Iru, Elah, and the Am, and the son of Elah, the Valley of Elah, by the way, well known. Uh-huh. That's where David fought uh, the giants. Um, and the son of Elah, Kenats. The sons of Jehalel, Ziph, Zipha, Tiriah, and Asarel. The sons of Etzra, Jether, Mered, Efer and Yalon. These are the sons of Bithia. Hmm? Where'd she come from? The daughter of Pharaoh. Oh. Whom Mered married. Mered married the daughter of Pharaoh. Again, these are probably various rulers Mm -hmm. of the regions that they established. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, um, mm, mm, that's Bithya not. doesn't that's not, sound like a uh, an Egyptian name. That's not in the Septuagint. Oh, is it now? Verse seventeen: The sons of Ez- Ezra, Yether and Mered and Epher and Yalon, and Yether fathered Miriam and Shemai and Mereth, father oh, of Eshtemoa. An entire sentence. That's just okay. Verse eighteen: ah. These are the sons of Geliah, the daughter of Pharaoh, whom Mered. Took or oh. married. Hmm. Yeah. Goliath so is they, different than Bithia or Bithia. Yeah. Um, hmm. These are the sons of Bithia or Bithia. Tomato, tomato. The daughter of Pharaoh, whom Mered married, and she conceived and bore Miriam, Shammai, and Ishba. We really need a chart. We do. The, <laughs> our whiteboard, we're going to need a bigger board. Yeah. Miriam, Shammai, and Ishba, the father of Eshtemoa, and his Judahite wife bore Yared, Yared, the father of Gedor, Hever, the father of Soko, and Yekutiel, the father of Zephon, Zanoa, Zanoa, the sons of the wife of Hodia. I'm not going to get a certificate. I'm not. Hmm. The sister of Naham were the fathers of Kela, the Garmite. Who's a Garmite? Don't know. And Estemoa, the Maakathite. And that would be um, uh, probably Abel, Abel Beth Ma'aka, which is um, mm. near, it, it's a little southwest of Dan. It's at the north end of the uh, the Hula Valley. So between the Sea of Galilee and mm-hmm. Mount Hermon. So the very northern edge of what is now Israel. Plain of the something? Um, Doesn't Abel mean plain or? Uh, I Abel think it Shatab? means weeping. Doesn't Shab. Oh. It means plain of, or can also mean weeping. Avel Shatim, the, yeah. the uh, acacias of mourning. Yeah, that's true. The sons of Shimon, Anon, Rina, Ben Hanan, and Telon. The sons of, those are easy. The sons of Ishi, oh, love Ishi, it's a good one to pronounce. Zohet <laughs> and Ben Zohet. Zohet and Ben Zohet, I guess a son and grandson maybe. Mm-hmm. The sons of Shelah, the son of Judah, Er, the father of Leka, Lada, the father of Manasha, and the clans of the house of linen workers at Beth Ashvea and Yochim, and the men of Kotseva and Yoash and Saraf, Saraf, hmm. hmm, who ruled in Moab and returned to Lechem. Now the records are ancient, it says, 
These were the potters who were inhabitants of Netayim and Gedera. Hmm. Not King Gedera. No. <laughs> We've been watching way too many Godzilla movies lately. Yeah, yeah. They lived there in the king's service. Uh, let's see. The, the Septuagint says they grew strong and dwelled there. Hmm. The descendants of Simeon. Now we leave Judah. The sons of Simeon, Nemuel, Yamin, Rayi, sorry, Yariv, Zera, Shaul, Shalom was his son, Mibsam his son, Mishma his son, the sons of Mishma, Hamuel his son, Zakur his son, Shimei his son. Shimei had sixteen sons and six daughters, but his brothers did not have many children, nor did all their clan multiply like the men of Judah. They lived in Beersheba, Moloda, Hatzar Shual, Bilha, Etzrem, sorry, Etzem, Tolad, Betuel, Horma, Ziklag, Bet Makaboth, Hatzar Suzim, Bet Biri, and Sha'araim. These were their cities until David reigned. And their villages were Etam, Ain, Rimon. Rimon as in the. Thunder. Thunderer. Oh, is that why the volcanic area down in the southern mm-hmm. part of Israel is Ramon Crater? Well, it, it could be, but we're talking about that same region because Judah was in the south and in the Negev, so oh. this, this could be in that same region. But yes, the Ramon Crater is yeah. down, down in that Are we going to go to that in March? Uh, I know it was on the original look. one, then we've had to change the, the dates, and then we had to change so. a few things. I think so. Um, Ramon, Tochan, and Ashan, five cities, along with all their villages that were around these cities, as far as Baal. Hmm. Interesting. These were their settlements, and they kept a genealogical record. Meshovav, is my chapter longer than yours? Yes. <laughs> you say that with such glee. Meshovav, <laughs> Yamlek, Yosha, the son of Amaziah, Yoel, Yehu, the son of Yoshivia, Yoshivia, son of Sariah, son of Asiel, Elonai, Yaakovat, sorry, Yaakova. Yesh, Yeshohai, Yeshohaya, I mean, Isaiah, Adiel, Yeshimiel, Benaya, Zitza, that's an easy one, the son of Shifi, the son of Alon, son of Yadai, son of Shimri, son of Shemaiah. These mentioned by name were princes, and their clans and their fathers' houses increased greatly. They journeyed to the entrance of Gedor, to the east side of the valley. Where's Gedor? You can look that up. To the east side of the valley to seek pasture for their flocks, where they found rich, good pasture, and the land was very broad, quiet, and peaceful, for the former inhabitants there belonged to Ham. <laughs> Not John Ham. Uh, Gedor, yeah, yeah. Probably a reference to Gerar, which is uh, northwest of Beersheba in uh, ta- the s- territory of Simeon. Uh, apparently, uh, it's not uncommon to mistake the letter R for D and vice versa mm. in uh, Hebrew. So that's uh, apparently a common spelling error in ancient Hebrew manuscripts. The uh, Septuagint for verse 39 does, in fact, read Gerar to the east of I. Ah, okay. Hmm. It's interesting, too, that <laughs> we get for the former inhabitants there belonged to Ham. Um, we've, we've kicked Ham out, is, is essentially what the implication here is. Now, again, three sons of Noah. Yeah. They spread out from Ararat. Mm-hmm. Some went to the north, some went to the south, some maybe went to the east or the west. But uh, Ham's sons may have originally, you know, sort of staked claim to good pasture land and they were kicked out. That would be the Canaanites. Yep. Yeah. These registered by name came in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah, and destroyed their tents and Maonites who were found there and marked them for destruction. Harem? Um, or just marked them for destruction to this day and settled in their place because there was pasture there for their flocks. Uh, not, uh, no, it's not Harem here. Yeah, it's, I didn't uh, think it might be. Well, no, was, but it, but no, okay, it's Yaharamu, which is a verb, but oh, uh, yes, it, yes, it's from the same origin. Yes, yes. harem, meaning uh, devoted to destruction. So right. does this refer then to, uh, even though this is in the days of Hezekiah, mm-hmm. um, 
essentially territory was taken over. And I, I assume since it's referring back to verse 40, that this refers to the inhabitants who uh, from Ham who lived there at one time. And so Hezekiah and his gang kicked him out. Is that it? Uh, sorry, try to follow your, your question at the same time, looking something else up. Um, these registered by name came in the days of Hezekiah and destroyed their tents, destroyed the tents of the Hamites. And the yeah, Yanites. that's what I mean. The yeah. Hams. Yeah. They kicked out the hams. Yeah. <laughs> Hamite, get out. Termite, get out. L.A. Marzulli would be there. <laughs> yes. These registered by name, verse 40, 41, came in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah, and destroyed their tents and the Maonites who were found there, and marked them for destruction to this day, and settled in their place because there was pasture there for the flocks. And some of them, 500 men of the Simeonites, went to Mount Seir. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. In Edom. Having as their leaders Pelatia, Neraya, Rephaya, mm-hmm. and Utziel, the sons of Ishi. And they defeated the remnant of the Amalekites who had escaped, and they had lived, have lived there to this day. So the Amalekites apparently fled down to Mount Seir in, the neg- in uh, Edom. Edom, and that was their original territory. Mm-hmm. That's where Moses and the uh, Israelites encountered them when yes. uh, they they had to hold up Moses' arms because when his arms fell, the uh, Amalekites began to uh, uh, prevail in the battle. But there were still Amalekites living as late as the time of Saul because Saul left their king Agag alive, and for that he left God Agag agog. Him. Yes, and. Uh, who is it? Um, Haman, in the time of Ruth, was named as an Agagite, so possibly an Amalekite. Haman was in the time of Ruth or in the time of Esther? A- Esther, sorry, Esther. <laughs> Grab the wrong proper noun. <laughs> the wrong lady. Yeah. Okay, uh, now we get uh, the descendants of three more tribes here. First Chronicles I chapter know. 5. And uh, Go get them, the descendants Go of get those names. Reuben uh, would be Reuben in uh, Hebrew, but I'll use the way we normally we'll just recognize it that. in English. The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but because he defiled his father's couch, as you Tried recall, to take over his king. Right. Went into the uh, concubine Bilha, which mm-hmm. was a thing back in the day. We'll see Absalom do that later to yeah. David. It's like, look, I'm the big dog, which is... Essentially, it's a dominance game is what's going on there. Oh, yeah. And he lost his birthright because of that. But because he defiled his father's couch, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph, the sons of Israel, so that he could not be enrolled as the oldest son. Though Judah became strong among his brothers and a chief came from him, yet the birthright belonged to Joseph. Now, isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. And kind of... Um, foreshadows the tension between the northern and southern kingdoms because you had Judah who emerged as the most dominant of the tribes of Israel mm-hmm. but uh, the the northern kingdom often called Ephraim who was the uh, the second son of Joseph who mm-hmm. supplanted Manasseh because Jacob crossed his hands when he gave the blessing mm-hmm. uh, those became the two dominant contenders among the tribes of Israel, Ephraim leading the northern and uh, Judah, the southern kingdom. Yes, and because Ephraim in some ways echoes, because he was half Egyptian, mm-hmm. both of those brothers were. And it's this idea that the Gentiles too would inherit mm, one day. True. So yes, the Lord through the father gave him, through, through, through Jacob, gave this promise of inheritance to the Gentiles, mm-hmm. even going way back then. True. And the king, you know, kingdom line mm-hmm. would go through Judah. By the way, remember how Judah was the one who said, look, I promise if you go back and get Benjamin, mm-hmm. tell I, I, I will stay here. And if, if anything happens to him, kill me. Mm-hmm. That was a brave thing for Judah to do. Right, right. Because for all he knew, they were going to go back and never come back. Yeah. And he'd die. <laughs> Uh, The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but because he defiled his father's couch, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh, the son of Israel. Hold on, hold on. Read, is that verse three? One. I went back to the start again. Oh, okay, sorry, yeah. So that he could not be enrolled as the oldest son, though Judah became strong among his brothers and a chief came from him, yet the birthright belonged to Joseph. The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, Hanach, 
Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. Okay. In the Septuagint, it's really interesting. Enoch. Yes. Is yes. the first name, but Phallus is the second one. So it's like, what is the etymology of that? Okay. That's Don't even think about it. A good question. Uh, they they render it in the newer uh, Lexham Septuagint as Palu, the same way as it mm. is in the uh, ESV. Yeah. Hezron and Carmi, uh, the sons of Joel or Yoel, Shemaiah his son, Gog his son, Shimei his son, Micah his son, Reiah, Reiah his son, Baal his son. Named him Baal. You left a you, you one guy like Benaiah gets left out of here. Hmm. Verse four, the sons of Yoel, Shimei, and Benaiah, his son. Nope, not there. Poor Benaiah, what he did? I don't know. Uh, Micah, his son. Re, this is verse five now. Re, Reiah, his son. Baal or Baal, his son. Beira, his son, whom Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, carried away into exile. Mm-hmm. He was a chief of the Reubenites. And his kinsmen by their clans, when the genealogy of their generations was recorded, the chief Ye'el and Zechariah, and Balot the son of Azaz, and Shema son of Joel, or Yoel, who lived in Aror, which uh, that's on the east side of the, well, of course, Reuben did settle mm, on the east yes, side. Yes, he yeah. did. As far as Nebo and Baal Meon. He also lived to the east as far as the entrance of the desert, this side of the Euphrates, because their livestock had multiplied in the land of Gilead. Um, that's getting up towards Bashan. Mm-hmm. And in the days of Saul, they waged war against the Hagrites, Egyptians, who fell into their hand. And they lived in their tents throughout the, all the region east of the Gilead. Or east of Gilead. Now, the Hagrites, well, okay, descended of Hagar possibly, but um, they would not have been Egyptians. They would have been nomads living in the yeah, desert. Yeah, this simply yeah. says in the Septuagint, it says sojourners in the land. Yeah. Okay, nomads. Uh, Verse 11, the descendants of Gad. The sons of Gad live over against them in the land of Bashan, as far as Salaka. Mm. Joel, or Yoel, the chief, Shepham, the second, Yanai, and Shephat in Bashan, and their kinsmen, according to their father's houses. Michael, Meshulam, Shiva, Yorai, Yakan, Zia, and Ever, seven. These were the sons of Avahel, the son of Huri, the son of Yeroah, son of Gilead, son of Michael, son of Yeshaya, son of Yachdo, son of Boz. B-U-Z, Buzz. Mm-hmm. Aldrin. Uh, yes. <laughs> Ahai, the son of Avdiel, son of Guni, was chief in their father's houses. And they lived in Gilead, in Bashan, and in its towns, and in all the pasture lands of Sharon. I didn't know you had pasture lands. I do. I've got Well, actually, we kind of do right out here. I know. Yeah. That's where the cattle live. Mm-hmm. Uh, into their limits. All of these were recorded in genealogies in the days of Yotham, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, king of Israel. The Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh had valiant men who carried shield and sword and drew the bow, expert in war, 44,760 able to go to war. They waged war against the Hagrites, Yetur, Nafish, and Nodav. Hmm. And when they prevailed over them, or when they were helped to prevail over them, the Hagrites and all those, and all who were with them were given into their hands, for they cried out to God in the battle, and he granted their urgent plea because they trusted in him. They carried off their livestock, 50,000 of their camels, 250,000. This is 5,000. Ah, okay. That seems a little more likely. Mm, it says 50,000 sheep, but 5,000 camels. Yeah, well, here it's... Uh, no, sorry, 250,000. 250,000 sheep. That's a lot But 50,000 camels, that's, that's a lot of pasturage mm-hmm. for camels. Mm-hmm. 5,000 would be a lot. 250,000 sheep, 2,000 donkeys, and 100,000 men alive. For many fell because the war was of God, and they lived in their place until the exile. Verse 23, the half-tribe of Manasseh. Now, the members of the half-tribe of Manasseh lived in the land. They were very numerous from Bashan to Baal Hermon. That's mm-hmm. uh, the lord of Mount Hermon. Yes. Sinir, which was the Amorite name for Mount Hermon, mm-hmm. and Mount Hermon. So yes, Very exactly. specific here. So the half-tribe of Manasseh basically occupied the ancient kingdom of Og. Uh, and or at least shared it with uh, the tribe of Gad. Bear in mind, when you go with us to Israel and we go into that area, mm-hmm. you'll be in Og's old territory. Yeah. There's a reason why they went there first. Mm-hmm. These were the heads of their father's houses. Ifer, Ishi, Eliel, 
Azriel, Jeremiah, or Jeremiah, Hodaviah, and Yachdiel, mighty warriors, famous men, heads of their fathers' houses. But they broke faith with the God of their fathers and whored after the gods of the people of the land whom God had destroyed before them. Bear in mind where they're living. <laughs> Something about that territory. It's the valley of the shadow of death. Uh-huh. So the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pul, this is Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, the spirit of Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, well, okay. <laughs> well, this says Felok, yep. king of Assyria, and the spirit of, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, Pul was kind of a nickname, P-U-L. Uh, uh, the spirit of Pul, king of Assyria, the spirit of Tiglath-Pileser, king of Isra- Assyria. Why are you stirring up the spirit of, like uh, getting them all riled up? Yeah, that's... That's a good question. Are we literally the spirit of? (laughs) And the uh, Faith Life Study Bible just kind of dodges that question altogether. It's like, why do they mention Pull and then Tiglath Pileser? I thought Pull was uh, the Mm, nickname of the king. uh, Yeah, it's like they're two different individuals. And again, the spirit of. The the Net Bible does it this way. King Pull of Assyria, parentheses, that is King Tiglath Pileser of Syria, close close parentheses. Boy, it just seems like two individuals here in the Septuagint. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, uh, because I, I was aware that Pull was, and that's why I jumped ahead without reading the rest of that nah. verse. I was aware that that was a nickname of Tiglath Pileser. The uh, Hebrew mentions them both, but doesn't clarify that Pull is the nickname of Tiglath Pileser. Anyway, uh, he Who took- played third base for the <laughs> Chicago Cubs? Uh, if only. And Pull's missed it again! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it'd be much better if he would go up to bat with a bat instead of a sword. Oh, yeah, I know. He's just he's cutting just the ball doing... in half. Uh, the spirit of Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, and he took them into exile, namely the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh, and brought them to Hela, Hevor, Hara, and the river goes on to this day. Well, I would say we go on to the next chapter, but I think because this is we're already at an hour. Yeah. Well, then it's time to close out. We've just blathered too far. Um, This is the last fellowship of the year. It is. We're going to take the next couple of weeks for the holiday. And uh, when when we take a break for a holiday, it means we're going to write. (laughs) (laughs) We rarely stop to breathe. But uh, Which sometimes causes us to just pass out. (laughs) Yeah, it's not a good thing. It's uh, (laughs) uh, severe tire damage. Oh. What are what you we're looking, looking at? Just, just. So you saw another spider no, yesterday. No. He's looking around. He says, a "Spider." In the there wall. was a spider on the wall over there. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what happened to him. Well, yeah, just a uh, squirrel. Gone. Squirrel. <laughs> we uh, we pray that you have a, a blessed and peaceful holiday season. We will be, uh, yeah, taking the next couple of weeks. There will be an, another view from the bunker tonight, and also one coming up on Wednesday of this week. We'd originally a planned, yeah, a special. Um, Tonight, it's a young man who reached out to me who um, I, I'd not been aware of. He's a young man named Jamal Bird, B-Y-R-D. He's um, from Portland, uh, rather, no, I'm sorry, um, Tacoma, Tacoma, Washington. Originally from Detroit, but family moved to Tacoma through a variety of circumstances mm-hmm. to kind of get away from uh, Detroit, to be frank. Yeah, well. He um, earned an athletic scholarship to the Air Force Academy, served in the Air Force. Wow. Um, excelled. But uh, went through a number of challenges. And and he's a young man. I I can say this because I read enough of his book, which is an autobiography called uh, Battle Tested. uh, When you say young man, it's anybody under 40 to me. Well, yeah. He put enough clues in there. It's like, oh, okay, his mom was born the same year I am. So uh, I was. So I I guess that makes him young. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's younger than Nicole. But he's been through some life experiences. And he is now successful. In, in business, he has uh, uh, served his time with the Air Force and uh, uh, wants to encourage other young men who may be coming from similar circumstances that you don't need to be, uh, your, your life does not need to be dictated by the circumstances in which you were born. It's just like Jabez, who, yeah. who was born into a circumstance that, that just implied that he wasn't wanted and he was brought pain to your mom and, yeah. and you're probably cursed. So Yeah, you think about that. Growing up as a kid where your name is essentially a play on words meaning pain. Mm -hmm. And it's a reminder every time your name gets called, hey, pain, come here. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ichabod. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, Jamal is a a really, really fine young man. And and the Lord has got some plans for him because starting out where he's at now at the age of 30, I was not anywhere near 
where he is already in his mm-hmm. understanding of God and Jesus Christ and our need for salvation. But the fact that through him, through God, through Christ, all things are possible. Mm-hmm. And he is living proof of that. He uh, came from a home that uh, uh, his, his parents did not stay together, but uh, he is now married, has a, uh, a child, and he became a stepdad right away. Uh, as you became an instant mom when, mm-hmm. when we married. Uh, so you know the, the challenge that that, uh, that that is. He does have a stepfather whom he, he loves, but he, he says he needed to be tougher on me than he was. Mm. But his stepdad was, again, in a difficult circumstance. This right. is not my son. Do I take the initiative? Do I, do I treat him as though he were my own, or should I go, go a little gentler? Well, anyway, uh, Jamal is a, a very interesting young man so do check out the interview i mean this is uh i think something that will be an encouragement to other young men coming up the way he did and that's tonight that is tonight but the uh, special because also tonight while that is being released i'll be talking with our friends uh dr judd burton pastor doug van dorn and uh, brian gadawa and we'll be discussing christmas so that is going to release on wednesday ahead of next week which is christmas eve oh good i'm so glad to hear that great that you know seriously that that group of uh, individuals, those those fine gentlemen that mm-hmm. you talk with about once a month. Yeah, and we've it's been incredible. doing it for nearly a year. This will be the 11th program, the series that uh, Judd dubbed Iron and Myth, and we picked mm-hmm. up that. It's a great name. So um, the 11 Iron and Myth, this will be the 11th Iron and Myth discussion. You're going to talk about St. Nicholas? Um, I'm sure we will will. discuss that. We'll talk about um, why Saturnalia Mm -hmm. is not the origin of Christmas. Uh, Doug Van Doren is going to talk about astral prophecy. So we'll get into Revelation 12, the woman clothed in the sun with the moon at her feet and how that relates to uh, determining the actual birth Mm -hmm. date of Jesus. So we'll be talking about that and, and why it's okay for Christians to celebrate Christmas on December 25th. Yeah. I mean, we know that's not the date he was born. No, but, you know, it doesn't matter. It because doesn't. seriously, if somebody, I've got friends who were born at Christmas and they celebrate their birthdays in July. It's not their birthday, mm-hmm. but it's when we choose to celebrate it. Right, right. It is the one time of year, as you rightly point out, where we are free to say the name of Jesus Christ without the kind of pushback we get when we try to do it mm-hmm. other times of the year. You can even do this in the land of Israel freely in Mm a Muslim quarter in Bethlehem. Yeah. They want you to come and visit. It's open again for tourists and they're just full to the brim. Mm -hmm. And they love for you to come in. They love to have the Christians come in and spend their dollars. Yep. So that, uh, you know, they can frankly make money off the Christians. (laughs) That's true. But you get to say the name of Jesus Christ over and over and over again amongst a bunch of Muslims in the land of Israel. And. Just to, to left turn for just a moment, um, we, we get some questions occasionally when people ask us about the tour to Israel and going over to Jordan, which is, as you know, a Muslim nation. Mm-hmm. But they are very friendly to Christians. In Extremely fact, so. The, the kingdom of Jordan is going to invest $300 million to develop the baptismal site that they've got on their side of the river mm-hmm. near it's Jericho. one yeah. of the it's, it's, so-called. Well, yeah, I mean... The site that we visit on our tour, Yardanit, which mm-hmm. is just south of the Sea of Galilee, that's not where Jesus was baptized. Neither is the site that Jordan is developing. But the point is that they're spending the money because they want Christians to come and they want to be known as a nation that is friendly to Christians. Mm-hmm. Because honestly, Jordan is a very poor nation. They don't have much there, but they do have a lot of biblical history, as we just saw with I the know. tribes of Reuben Gad, the half tribe of Manasseh. Much of that happened east of the Jordan River mm-hmm. in what is now the kingdom of Jordan. So it's very safe. They do send police escorts with all mm-hmm. the tours, but they've got developed sites. Mount Nebo is mm-hmm. well developed. The, uh, uh, the Byzantine church in Madaba, home of that mosaic, the Madaba map. I know everyone we've met over there. Petra. We've been there twice now and they are so friendly. Yeah. So, uh, if you're considering it and you're thinking, well, oh, it'd be great to see Petra, but we're not sure about going to them. Ma- no, they're very friendly. Just mm-hmm. when you, you go to Petra, don't, don't, don't respond to the kids that are trying to get you to, you know, engage with them because they're trying to sell you stuff. I know it feels rude to just ignore them, but that's what you have to do. The but, other thing uh, is that you can't drink the the tap water. You can right. take a shower in it. Uh, maybe brush your teeth with it, but don't swallow it. You yeah. buy bottled water. Everyone over there does because they are a land that has very little water. Israel and Jordan are working together to bring more water to the mm-hmm. kingdom of Jordan and 
by bringing it up from the Red Sea, desalinating it and pouring the brine into Mm -hmm. the Dead Sea, hopefully revitalizing the Dead Sea, which is drying Uh up too. But uh, anyway, more information at uh, gilberthouse.org slash travel. We've already got dates for our 2024 tour that we will reveal soon Mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully some exciting news about uh, a guest on that tour. Yeah, as soon as Aaron, uh, the Lipkin Tours uh, Mm -hmm. head, Aaron Lipkin, tells us that the door has now closed on registering for the 2023 tour, we'll start to reveal the information about 2024 right uh, we're going to go about the same time of year and there are other things that we simply cannot tell you about yet because they have not been confirmed but um we have currently about 15 spots left on bus number three mm-hmm. and that's seven couples maybe yeah but you know it's in other words you need to make the decision very soon because they, the, the Lipkin people need to know how many uh, hotel rooms to reserve. Right. And if you want to get an idea of what you'll see on the tour, we've been releasing little video clips from our tour video. Of course, we, we showed much of what was on those on uh, clips Friday. on Sci Friday over the uh, last and Unraveling Revelation mm-hmm. over the last uh, six weeks or so. But we're showing them in little three minute clips uh, and you can get those on our app, but also our YouTube channel. Um and uh, just little little vignettes showing you what we saw. It's essentially getting a Gilbert's eye view of the land of Israel. That's really what our tour videos are. We sit down Sharon at the end. Sharon doesn't of, see very well with it. I don't know. Do you want that? It's all fuzzy and astigmatism yeah. is making it go double sometimes. Oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's worth doing at least once in, in your life. And we've been very blessed really that uh, Aaron Lipkin and uh, Eddie Lipkin have been uh, become good friends of ours mm. and uh, make it possible for we us. So just love those people. we will keep doing it and sharing what we learn with you as uh, yeah, however we can. Mm-hmm. If you can't join us on the tours, just watch because over time we'll have more tour videos out and we mm-hmm. will eventually release those out. Our we just travel documentaries. We just want people, we want you to know why the geography is important. It makes the it helps the Bible come alive when mm-hmm. you see the locations here, down there. That's where David and Goliath, you know, yes. con- had their confrontation up there on that mountain. That's where Jesus was transfigured into a being mm-hmm. of light. There in that river, not here in this river, but in this river somewhere is where Jesus was baptized, and yeah. the Spirit descended on him like a dove. And that just it it gives you chills. It really does. So if you can go, please please register very very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um think that's it for you know the year yes well god bless you and merry christmas we'll uh, close with a word of prayer father thank you for bringing us through another year this has been a year of change for us as we uh, have launched this ministry and father we are thankful for all those who have um, have been led to support us we pray that each time that we sit down whether it whatever program we're doing lord that we honor and glorify you and not ourselves And that um, you would lead us to speak only that which you would have spoken. Adding nothing to your word, taking nothing away from it, but always, Father, sharing the hope that we have in Jesus with those who have already declared their faith in you and with those who have not yet made that decision. May we never become a stumbling block, Father, to those who still have not seen the light of your truth. Help us always to show your love, even with those, to those who have not yet accepted you. Those who may still even curse your name, curse us, not realizing, Father, that it is you that they're angry with and not us. May we do as you commanded and turn the other cheek. Draw them to you through us, Father, by reflecting your love, the love that you showed us through your sacrifice while we were yet in our sins. Father, we pray for your blessing, for your peace on Jerusalem and on the world. There are so many conflicts across this world, Father. So many people who are seeking a better life. And then those who are exploiting those trying to find a better life. The human traffickers, Lord, operating on every continent in this world and trafficking our brothers and sisters sometimes for very dark purposes. Lord, we pray for your justice to come soon. Come quickly, Lord, we pray. But until that day, Father, we pray for your spirit to guide us and lead us 
to those who need you, Father, and give us the words to speak that we would share the hope that we have in you. We pray for your blessing, Father, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Until next year, (laughs) I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We post a new Bible study each Sunday morning. Subscribe to the podcast and explore the archives online at gilberthouse.org. 